Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another Halloween card, which is doing double duty today, as it is also my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which these colors together threw me for a loop for a minute. I struggled. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I started thinking about this Picket Fence Studios um, little ghost image that I wanted to use. And I was like, I think I can make these colors work with that stamp and actually turn it into a Halloween card. So the colors were actually blue, red, and orange. And I, like I said, I struggled, but I decided to do blue for my background. And I had just used my Distress watercolor paper there. And I just kind of painted a quick messy background with blueprint sketch and a little bit of black soot Distress Oxide ink. And then I just set that aside to dry for a bit. And while that's drying, I'm going to stamp this little ghost image from the Picket Fence Studios Let's Get Sheet Faced Together <laughs> stamp set. And I stamped it onto more Distress watercolor paper using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I'm gonna um, clear heat emboss that so that I can do some quick watercoloring on this little guy too. So um, stamped it, covered it with a clear embossing powder, melted it with my heat tool, and then I just took more of that black soot Distress Oxide ink and just added more water. So it's just a pale sort of gray and added that to the little ghost just to give it some shading and whatnot. And then I am going to take more of the black and add it to his hat. And this is where I mess up a little bit and go across the lines. And it starts soaking into the actual ghost area there, right along the top, because everything's still wet. I've said how I like to do heat embossing to kind of keep things contained. But even then, sometimes I'm a little messy. But since everything was still wet, I just kind of kept pulling out the um, black ink that went onto the ghost and then dabbed it with a tissue just to kind of soap it up, like soak it up a little bit. And it was good to go. So I finished his hat with the red and the orange for the color combo. So I thought that would just kind of work. So I just used, I just barely smushed my um, candied apple and spice marmalade onto my glass mat there. And I'm just using those and painting all this really quickly to fill it all in. And then I watered down the candy apple a little bit more just to paint that inside area of his mouth since it was fairly large. I didn't want to just completely leave it. And now the background's pretty much dry. So I added a second layer of color just to intensify it some more. I really like how the oxide's layered. They're just... They're so creamy. There's just something about them. So I'm just, again, messy. Just adding a little bit more water, some more of that blueprint sketch, a little bit more of the black soot. When you mix those together, you get this kind of really pretty deep sort of navy smoky color. So added all of that. My background is now completely dry and I want to add a bit of splatter. So I just took some white gouache. I have this little tube that I got from Simon's Stamp months ago, months ago. And you don't need very much. Like when I take the lid off this, I barely squeeze the tube, like hardly at all. Um, water down a tiny little bit. And then I'm just splat. I put it right onto my acrylic block. And then I just flick the edge of my paintbrush against the edge of the block to create my little splatter here. And then just splatter this whole background because the whole time in my head, I was thinking this looks like a night sky. So I got everything splattered and with gouache, when it dries, it's a little lighter than, you know, my go-to, you know, Copic Opaque White or anything like that. But at the same time, I really like it. So I, again, let that completely dry. And then I die cut it with um, the largest of the Simon Says Stamp wonky rectangle wafer dies. And then I also trimmed down some red and white striped pattern paper. And, and I've said this before, this is why I really, really like participating in the color throwdown challenges because it just gets me to use colors so often that I normally would not use together. I would not do a red, blue, and orange color combo for a Halloween card. That just wouldn't occur to me. So I really enjoyed that. So that red pattern here was from the Hearts and Stripes paper pack from MFT. And then for my sentiment, um, someone was asking me if the new sentiment labels wafer dies from Simon's um, Stamp Timber release will work in the little sidekick die cutting machine. And they will, they're too long to fit on the cutting plates, but like I showed just now, um, you can still make them work. If you want to, you can run through the first half, then readjust your cardstock and the die to die cut the last half if you want the entire strip die cut. But most of the time, every time I use these, I just want, you know, part of it. So I just die cut it like I did and then just trimmed off the remaining bit with scissors. It's fine because I usually only need a part portion of the die cut strip to use for my sentiments. 
So again, I use the anti static powder tool and I'm stamping a sentiment from the Picket Fence Studios set um, Wicked Together. I like this one. It says, is it Halloween yet? So stamp that. And then I used my detail white embossing powder on that. And then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. So I've got my um, sentiment strip here all perfectly straight. Sentiment white heat embossed on that um, cardstock strip. And I'm going to adhere that to my card front with just a bit of Gina K Connect glue. So I just kind of figure out where I want to place my sentiment so that it doesn't end up, you know, covered up by that little ghost. And then I'm just going to line everything up on my glass mat here to use my grid line because more often than not lately, I'm pretty good at eyeballing things, but it's amazing how crooked sometimes like, I don't know, I think my eyesight's going or my just my sense of like straightness <laughs> lining everything up so often it's like a card will be done. And I'm like, everything's crooked. What was, uh, yeah. anyway, so got it lined up, um, trimmed off the excess with my scissors and then uh, pulled out my stamp platform again so I can stamp this sentiment from the original stamp set here <laughs> and the one that actually says, let's get sheet faced together, which just kills me. I think it's hilarious. So line that up on the inside of my card, stamp that with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then while I had the inside of my card here, I want to stamp that ghost again, just to, you know, tie it all together. So I'm going to move my card base up a bit here so I can just stamp the ghost kind of in the lower corner and just inking him up with that same blueprint sketch oxide ink. Just ink him up, stamp him on the inside of my card. And now I can start um, adhering all of these elements. So the pattern paper I had trimmed to the same size as the card front. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half, just to give a nice little frame to the main panel here that I die cut with that wonky rectangle die. And that panel I am using Simon Says Stamps Big Mama foam tape on. And um, I'm gonna adhere the pattern paper to my card base first with my Gina K Connect glue. And that's gonna completely cover my card base. So once that's adhered, I can then pop that um, little watercolor panel on there, just peel, already peeled off the backing on all that foam tape. So I'm gonna pop this into place. And then the real kind of kicker of this card is I'm gonna pop this little ghost onto the card with an action wobble. I literally only have two full size action wobbles left. I always use the smaller ones, like almost all the time, but this is a larger image. So the full size action wobble is perfect. So all you gotta do is peel off the backing stick them down to my little character here. Make sure that's pressed down really, really well so it's good and adhered. And then you just peel off the backing off the other side and then pop that onto your card. And then he pops up and wiggles around and, you know, dances around. And it just, for me, this this is literally the easiest way to create an interactive card. Like, zero effort required. You just pop it on, you're done. I love it. <laughs> so I've got him popped into place. And then to bring in a little bit more of the orange for the color combo, again, I never would have pulled these out for a card like this. I normally would use, you know, like clear or white or silver or black, but I pulled out some orange jewels. These are the tangerine mix jewels from Little Things uh, from Lucy's Cards. So kind of sprinkled those on my background and I'm just adhering them into place with that Gina K Connect glue. And then as a final little bit of embellishment because I have didn't put it away from the last card and because I'm obsessed with it, I <laughs> coated the little ghost with the tonic aqua shimmer pens, that clear glitter that I just am obsessed with. So painted that onto him to completely cover him. It was really hard to show in this video and on camera because I'm filming in natural light. When I film at night, you can really see the shimmer when I turn my flashlight on. Like the sparkle just jumps at you. I love it, love it. <laughs> so coated it with that, let it dry. And now I've got my fun little wobbly ghost here, which also works like wobbly ghost. And then let's get she face together. You know, it all works. I love it. <laughs> so, um, and again, with the action wobbles, it goes, it presses flat. You can see right there, it goes completely flat. So it fits in an envelope. Great. You don't have to pay for extra postage, anything like that. And then when you pull it out of the envelope, it pops up, you can wiggle him. It's so fun. So that was my card for today. And for the color throwdown challenge, I will have links to everything in the description box below the video, the supplies, the color throwdown challenge, my blog post, etc. Check that out below if you're interested. Stay tuned. I'll have more videos coming very, very soon. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.